This video is for learning in D1 and we are looking at how to draw and interpret data flow diagrams. So the specification says we need to be able to interpret information presented using different forms of notation in a range of contexts. We've got to be able to present knowledge and understanding using different forms of notation. In this video, we're focusing just on data flow diagrams. And I believe that if you can draw and create your own data flow diagram for a scenario, then technically you are able to also interpret the information from one as well. So data flow diagrams, just as a recap, they show who or where the input data comes from, how data flows around the system, how the data is processed, what data is stored and who or where the data from the system is output to. On some of the more complex data flow diagrams, these are the symbols that are used. The oval shape is for a person, organization, or another system which sends or receives information. The rounded rectangle is a process or function, sometimes but not necessarily numbered. The rectangle is for a file or database, it's where something is stored. And the arrows obviously show the information flow by the direction of the arrow. This is a not a level zero data flow diagram. And when interpreting data flow diagrams, some of them can be quite complicated. This one shows our entity, which is the customer, and it shows them sending an order into the system. Now, the first process that takes place is that they receive the order, and that involves a set of actions that's going to take place, which is to send the received order through to the next process. And this is where it's going to check the credit status. Now, in order to check the credit status, we need to use some stored data. And that stored data is over here called credit rating. So the credit rating storage sends the credit details into this process. Now the credit check status can be checked and then you can either send an order rejection or an order confirmation. If it's an order rejection, then they will send the rejected order back to the customer. If it is an order confirmation, then they will send the order dispatch to the warehouse. Now from this point on where the warehouse is, that will have a set of processes as well. So this is just one small section and you can see sort of how complicated it can get. But if you follow the, the steps of the arrows, and a lot of the time these systems are numbered as well, it isn't too difficult to kind of interpret what's happening. Now the good news is you're only ever asked to draw a top level, level zero data flow diagram. That means we don't need to necessarily use all of those symbols and we are drawing a very simplified version of the problem. So this exam question, says pick a lily shoes sells shoes that are through its nationwide shops and telephone orders below is a part of the process of purchasing shoes through the company's website the company order is submitted the customer card payment details are checked with the credit card company the payment is either approved or rejected a confirmation of the order is sent to the customer with a delivery date or a notification that the card payment has not been accepted. Draw a top level data flow diagram showing the process of pick a lily shoes for online orders. Now, because this is a top level level zero diagram, it is a very simple diagram to draw. Pick a lily shoes sells shoes through its nationwide shops and telephone orders. Our first step is to find any entities in this question. So first of all, I'm going to color them in green just for any internal systems and red for any external entities. So pick a lily shoes is obviously an entity in this question because they are the main system, the main business that is part of this scenario. As we go through, we can also see that the customer order is submitted. So that means that there is a customer as an entity in this particular scenario. We've also got a credit card company as another entity. So that gives us three entities, Piccadilly Shoes, the customer and the credit card company. 
as we scan through, there's no other entities involved. So we know that an internal system is going to use a rectangle in a level zero data flow diagram. We also know that external entities use an oval shape for customer and credit card company. So step two, we are going to draw those shapes. So here you see we can show that the shapes have been drawn. We've got the organization is normally in the center of the diagram, and that's just because it's easier to show any other agencies or entities communicating with this organization. So you can put it wherever you want, but I find it's easier if you put them either side so that you can show any flow. Our next steps are going to be to have a look which information or data is actually being exchanged from and to each entity. So Piccadilly Shoes sells shoes through its nationwide shops and telephone orders. We've got to go through and see what the actual data or information is. So first of all, we've got our customer order. This is a particular piece of data that is going to be sent. We've also got customer card payment details. Then we've got our payment and whether that's either approved or rejected. So it's a payment approval or a payment rejection. We've then got a confirmation of the order and a delivery date or a notification that the payment hasn't been accepted. So we've got all of these things are bits of information. You need to then work out which, what direction those bits of data are flowing from and to. And we're going to draw arrows to label each one. So let's just say you started with customer order. You need to think who is the sender of the information and who is the receiver. So our customer has placed an order and that has gone to pick a lily shoes. So we're going to have an arrow from customer to pick a lily shoes and the arrow will be labeled with customer order. Next, You'd look at the next one down, it says customer card payment details are checked with the card company. So it's going to go from Piccadilly Shoes have now got the payment details. They are going to check with the credit card company. So it's going to go from Piccadilly Shoes to credit card company. And you would label it customer card payment details. And you just repeat those steps until you've done all of the different bits of information. So here we can see that we've drawn in our arrows and we've labeled them with the exact words used in the question. Just make sure that you check the direction of the arrows and reread over the question to make sure that everything is flowing in the right directions. This is a level zero DFD of the system. So it's a very simplified data flow diagram. Let's take a look at another exam question. This one says that the staff at a local driving school keep learners data in a database. The driving school uses its database to book driving lessons. Part of this process is learners request a driving lesson booking. A check is carried out to see what lesson bookings are available. The lesson booking is entered and the lesson booking file is updated. The learner will receive confirmation of the lesson booking. The driving instructor will receive the lesson booking details. Now, as we've seen with some other data flow diagrams, this whole system could be drawn in a really detailed data flow diagram and we could include all of the processes. But for a level zero data flow diagram that you will be expected to draw in the exam, we don't need to show any processes. So for example, if we go down and break this question down, we will see what I am talking about. So if we follow the same steps that we looked at before of finding the entities first, we need to ignore processes for level zero diagrams. So if we look at this question again, similar to last time, there will always be an entity that is the system or the organization. So here it is a driving school. So you could call that driving school or driving school database, whatever it is that you want to do. Underneath that, we're looking for who is actually engaging with the system. So we've got learners, where it says learners request a driving lesson booking. And we've also got the driving instructor. 
there's other things going on here that make it look more complicated than it needs to be where it talks about a check being carried out and lesson bookings available and so on all of that is processes that we are not going to include in this diagram so driving school uh, the driving school database or the driving school itself is our entity and these are our external entities the learner and the driving instructor so our next step is going to be to draw them out from the first question you should have a rough idea of how to do this now because we know our system is a rectangle and our external entities are ovals so here we can see our driving school as our main entity and then learner and instructor as our external entities again i've drawn it where the organization is in the middle just because it makes it a little bit easier because they're usually going to be the main um, kind of source for external data that's coming in so they are going to be receiving and send data to the external entities for our next step we're going to do something similar as before is we're going to highlight the information or data that's being exchanged from and to each entity we are going to ignore the processes so put them in red the things that would be an actual process if it was a different type of data flow diagram then you would include these as processes using the correct symbol but you're not going to need to draw one of those in the exam so we've got learners and they are going to request a driving lesson booking so our first piece of information or data is our booking request which is here then the next two are processes so carrying out checks to see what bookings are available no data is actually flowing in the system it's a process that's taking place the next one we've got lesson booking is entered and the lesson booking file is updated again no data is flowing in the system they're just being processed then we go on to the next one the learner will receive confirmation of the lesson booking so essentially we know that a confirmation is going to be sent back to the learner next we've got a driving instructor will receive the lesson booking details so we know that the driving instructor is going to get this piece of data sent to them so you need to think let's do one step at a time let's put the arrow in and label it let's put the arrow in and label it so learners request the driving lesson booking we're going to go from learner to driving uh, driving school and it's going to be a request the learner we're going to have an arrow going from driving school back to the learner and it's going to be a confirmation and we're going to have an arrow going from the driving school to the driving instructor and it's going to be labeled lesson booking so let's have a look at what that should look like so here we can see our dfd and we've got our driving school in the middle we've got our learner our instructor and we can see the flow of information including the direction and we've got each section labeled clearly and i've used very very closely or identical language from the question to make sure that it's very very clear so hopefully at this stage you are much more confident at drawing dfds and good luck with any questions that you get on the exam